Hi everybody and welcome back to the next episode of Shri Ganesh Atharva Shirsha. We are explaining the Atharva Shirsha in English along with chanting it in Sanskrit. I am trying to make it as simple as possible. But in case you have any questions, please feel free to drop a comment below. Also, the link to the first part of this Atharva Shirsha meaning is given in the comments below. So in case you have missed that, please watch that before you watch this one because we are going in a particular order. So yesterday what we spoke about or I would rather say in the last episode because I know so many of us will be watching it back to back, not as a live or but more as a replay. So we spoke about how Ganesh, Lord Ganesh is the all pervading consciousness. Now we are going to go to the next part where we are going to speak about from Gunatrayatita, from Avasthatrayatita, from Dehatrayatita, from Kalatrayatita in, in the ancient Indian traditions. We often seen people following the rule of three. In all the old religions, we have always followed the rule of three. But especially here, where we speak about the three, the three parts of everything. So let us begin with the first one, which is Tvam Gunatrayatita. Which are the three gunas? Sattva, Raja and Tam. In simple words, if I have to explain you, Sattva is purity. Raja is action. And Tama is laziness. But there is so much details about the three the three gunas. Um, if you would want to know more about it in the Bhagavad Gita, especially in chapter 17 and 18, uh, a lot is spoken about the three gunas. But here we speak about Lord Ganesh being all three. And rather than that, beyond all three. So, from guna trayatitaha, you are beyond the three gunas. From avastha trayatitaha, which is the walking, dreaming, deep sleep, avastha. Hmm. We often talk about the brain states. If, if you are a student of psychology and you might be knowing about the alpha, beta, gamma, theta, delta states, uh, your avastha refers to, particularly refers to the various, various states so we speak about the Jagruti, Sushupti and Swapna Avastha or the three states. Of course, there is so much to talk about this in detail, but we might not have that much time. Hence, I would just say in that manner. From Dehatrayatitha. Now, what is Dehatrayatitha? The gross body, the subtle body and causal body. If you are a student of energy, I'm sure we've spoken about various levels of aura, various levels of body, especially we speak about this in the advanced Reiki level classes. To put in simple words, these are the various layers of body. In Sanskrit or um, in the Hindu uh, prevalence, we often sp speak about the Sthula Sharir, which is the gross, the Sukshma Sharir, which is the subtle, and the causal, which is nothing but the current Sharir. We often also speak about the Mahakaran Sharir, but here we are saying Ganesh, is beyond, Lord Ganesh is beyond the three avasthas and the three layers of bodies, which is the causal, gross and subtle. From Kalatrayatitha, which means you are behind, you are beyond three times, which is past, present and future. A lot of, um, lot of times when you reach a particular level, you go beyond the time, which means you become Trikal Darshis and advanced Siddhis. Advanced Siddhas have these Siddhis where they can go beyond the three times in this living world. But when we are speaking about Lord Ganesh, wow, there is so much about, there is such a powerful energy and that's the reason he is often the first to worship in all, at the beginning, it's very auspicious to worship Lord Ganesh at all, the, at all times. And they always say that when you worship Lord Ganesh, everyone, everything else gets 
sorted because you are beginning on a very auspicious note because Lord Ganesh is beyond all of this. So th th this is about the, he is beyond all the three states, beyond the three gunas, beyond the three times and beyond the three states. My favorite line, I often talk about this because being an eternal student of energy, being an eternal believer of the energy sciences, having experienced my entire life being transformed through energy, I believe a lot in working on your own chakras. And the first chakra which we begin with is the Mooladhar. Lord Shri Ganesh resides at the Mooladhara Chakra. If you are interested in knowing what deities connect to what chakras, you can um, find one of my articles on Reiki Rays, which is chakras with the Indian, um, connected to each Indian deity, where Mooladhara is the beginning of the chakras. And it's connected to Lord Ganesh because Lord Ganesh eternally states, eternally stays, eternally resides on our Mooladhara Chakra, which is at the tailbone. That's why people who continuously suffer from anxiety attacks, uh, who continuously feel afraid, this, this chant is a great chant for you. You can even play this in the background and it will definitely help you with, with so much. So, Tvam Mooladhara Stitro Sinityam, you always reside at the Mooladhara Chakra. Thus, Lord Ganesh helps us to begin awakening of our Kundalini Shakti. What is the Kundalini Shakti? Kundalini Shakti is the energy which resides, Mother Kundalini resides on the base of your spine. And when the Kundalini starts awakening, it begins from the root, it goes all the way till Sahasrara Chakra. You can find more about that in my article. I would um, also share the link to that article in the comments below. You are the source of the three Shaktis, which is Ichha Shakti, Kriya Shakti and Jnana Shakti. Nothing but willpower, the power of action and the power of wisdom. Thus, when Ganesh, Lord Ganesh, when we bow down to him, we say, please help us awakening all these three Shaktis within us to move up beyond where we are today and to elevate our level of consciousness. Tvam yogino dhyayati nityam. That is the reason why the yogis meditate on you. Have you ever heard of any any chant beginning beginning without Om Shri Ganesha Maha? No, because we begin everything, all auspicious things, all meditations, we begin with the power of Lord Ganesh. That's why Vam Yogino Dhyantinitam, he is also the son of Lord Shiva, who is the Adi Yogi, who was the creator of all wisdom, who is the eternal teacher, who is the eternal father, the supreme consciousness of this of this entire system. And because Lord Ganesh is the son of Lord Shiva and Mother Goddess Parvati, he is the first one to be worshipped, and all yogis meditate on him. Tvam Brahmatvam, Vishnustvam, Rudrastram, Indrastam, Agnistam, Vayustam, Suryastam, Chandramastvam, Brahma Bhurvam, Smarut. He is Lord Ganesh. We tell him that you are the Supreme Brahma. You are the Vishnu. You are the Rudra. Rudra is another name for Lord Shiva. You are Indra. Indra is the Lord of Rains or the, the God, the King of all Gods. Agni, you are the God of Fire. Vayu, God of Wind, Surya, the Sun God, Chandrama, the Moon God. Brahma Bur Burma Swarot is nothing but you are the Brahman. And you, you are before the Bhur, Bhur Bhuva Suvar Lokas, which means you are Om or the Sakshat Parabrahma yourself. Ganadim Purva Mucharya, Varnadim Tadanantram. Anuswara Partara, Ardhendila Sutam, Tarena Ruddham, Etattava Manasuru. So the mantra Swarupa of Lord Ganesh, 
the first syllable of g is to be pronounced first immediately being followed by the we begin with gana which is the the first begin the first beginning of it is g then the anuswara thus making it gama now gam is the bija mantra of ganesh um we often talk about bij mantras in our mantras workshop where we where we talk about the bij mantras of all deities and how they help you with body see again i always say sanskrit is a language of vibrations um unfortunately this beautiful wisdom of hinduism was lost and very very fast with the advent of the world a lot of these things were labeled as superstitions so that people like you and me couldn't make use of these beautiful energy tools which are extremely simple and which can empower your your state it can change your energy body completely so gum the moment you chant gum you vibrate with the consciousness of lord ganesh thus we begin with the ga and then we go with go with the gum anuswara pratara tarena ruddham which means we begin with the chandra bindu which makes it gum and finally making it the om which means om gam is the mantra swarupa of lord ganesh then we say gakara purva rupam akaro madhyam rupam anuswara chand rupam bindu uttar rupam nada sannanam sagita sandhi so we begin with gakara the first form we begin with ga akara in the middle anuswara as the last form making it gam bindu on the top giving it gam thus joined with the nada all of it joined together making it a nada and giving it the mantra which helps you transcend beyond the form i'm trying to make it as easy as possible though there is so much deep wisdom with this and there is so much to explain but let us let us stop here today and the next part is we will start with it in the next episode i hope you enjoyed this i hope you get a lot of clarity with this i'm looking forward to your comments from you the whole idea of creating these videos is to people of my generation who are right now parents of young children you can explain these to them you can talk about these to them and you can also meditate on this beautiful chants which will help you change your state of energy your state of consciousness the creating profound shifts within your energy body helping you battle at all levels with emotional mental physical and spiritual stress elevating your level of consciousness helping you live a more rich a more powerful life i will see you in the next episode of shri ganesh atharva shiksha